In our last video, we walked through adding a file field to our brand new blog so that we could have that featured image portrayed on all of our blog entries we can show on our homepage, include it in social posts, whatever that might look like. Today, we are going to template that out so it can be displayed on the homepage as well as our blog page. So with that said, let's build. So now that we have our featured content and we have our blog channel built out, we're actually going to build out our templates. We're going to do this in a couple places. So first we have this little piece of real estate on our homepage that has our most recent blogs. Uh, and the initial design had three. So let's do that first. And then I'll show you the other couple templates that we'll build out. Um, so in our, in our code here, we have this nice little card. Let us build out our channel entries loop around this card. So right here, I'm going to add exp channel entries. And we want to only grab from the blog channel. And let's do that. We'll do our closing tag. We also want to limit this to only the last three entries. So let's add limit equals three. Now, another thing we want to do on 99% of your channel entry loops, EE has this great thing where it can grab from the URL the uh, content that you might want to grab. For our purposes here, we want to say dynamic equals no. For most of the purposes of what we'll build, dynamic equals no. We're also not going to add in a whole bunch of information in this loop. We only want the bare bones. So to make it a much greater experience, we're going to disable a couple things. First of all, we'll disable our categories and we'll disable, we don't want to disable member data. We'll just disable categories for right now. And so just with those three things, we've said we want to create a channel entries loop with the blog channel, limiting it to only the last three entries. We want to say dynamic equals no. And we just want to disable categories to make it a little bit faster. So we refresh our page and we've got three placeholder cards. That's a good sign. Let's actually take a look at our content now. So I'll expand this back up for us. All right, there's our image. And here's this. All right, so boost your conversion is the title here. So let's actually replace this with our title. And let's refresh, take a look what that looks like. Yep, and we now have our URL showing up. That's great. And so this is our snippet. For right now, uh, we're gonna leave that as is. Once we get into uh, the add-ons, I'll show you a little bit more how to do that. But let's also uh, add the author in here. So I can use the author tag. So when I refresh that, you'll see Doug everywhere. And it also has a date created. So let's do this. We're gonna use the entry date field. And if I were to use that as is, you can kind of see, let's look at that. It uh, spits out a nice integer, the number of seconds since 1970, uh, which is fine. But for most of our purposes, we want to make that nice and pretty. So we're going to use the format tag. And when you're using format on a date, uh, whether it be entry date, edit date, expiration date, whatever that may be, you want to use percent signs before uh, the fields that you're actually using. So here I'm going to do a YMD style date in our time tag. And here I want to make it nice and pretty. So I'll do format equals capital M, lowercase d, capital Y. And all of these formats follow PHP standard um, date formats, which I'll include in the notes here. So with that, let's refresh. And now we have a nice readable date. So the last thing we have to do, the second to last thing we have to do for our loop here is add in our featured image. So we have in our fields, let's go back and take a look. All of our fields, we have our featured image field. So let's do that. Here is our image. Let's get rid of this placeholder. And there's actually two ways that we can do this in Expression Engine. So one is just to call the image tag as is. So it was featured image, yep. 
So now I'm going to leave that blank alt tag there for a second. We'll see why. So I added that in there. If I go back to my site, I refresh. And now I've still got nice images in there. Um, you know, very basic out of the box. It just works. But let's say, for example, that I wanted to actually add in an alt tag that describes this image. So let's go in here. Uh, have you seen this cat? Let's go find our files. And in our blog images, I'm going to take my standing kitty and we'll say cat standing up. And that's going to be our image title. So let's save that. And now when I look at this, absolutely nothing's changed. I can inspect this. I can see here I still have a blank alt tag. Uh, that's not really doing much. So we can, instead of using the straight file field type, we can actually use this as a tag pair where we have an open and close and we can make use of all of the um, available uh, parameters on the file field type. So let's actually take a look at the file field type. And we can see we can uh, we have a couple of things, but we can variable pair usage. So we can see here we can use extension, upload date, URL, and we can use title. So let's do that now. Make the site a little bit more accessible by using featured image. And we will do URL here so we can see the image. And we'll do title here. So I'll refresh. And I've still got the same pictures here, but now you can see that uh, I've got my nice alt tag there with cat standing up to describe that picture. So great. So now let's keep going and let us add in all of the URLs. So our data here is going to live at, let's find our A tags. There we go. So we're going to make these live at slash blog slash entry. And then we're going to use the URL title to tell Expression Engine in our templates which entry to look at. So let me find the other one of those. I'm going to copy that. And right here. And where's that other one? Right here. Oh, that actually goes to me. That's fine. Let's just do it this way. Perfect. So now when I hover over this, you can see down at the bottom uh, that I've got this blog slash entry slash have you seen this cat. Perfect. So what we're going to do now, we've got our loop on our homepage. We're showing our most recent blogs. It's fantastic. Now let's take a look at our blog listing page. I went ahead and added uh, two new blog templates in a new blog group. So one of the index, which right now looks really bloated with a lot of the same content we have on the other pages. In our next lesson, we're going to go through what it looks like to do layout groups, uh, which are really nice, really easy way to stay dry. But for our purposes, we have the same exact block right here. So what we're going to do is go back here. We're just going to get all of this code in between this loop. And let's get rid of our blog card. And we'll just copy and paste that. Right now, we just don't want to limit it. So we'll remove that limit. Refresh. And there we go. We have our blog listing page ready to go. Now, the very last thing we need to do is actually show that content when a user lands on our page. So let's take a look at our entry page. All right. And we have our same thing here. Let's actually go and find our title great here. So we're going to build out a channel entry loop to pull in that one entry that's designated in the URL using URL segments. Um, so as you can see here, the URL that we have is learn a dash ee dot test, which is our base URL slash blog, which is segment one slash entry segment two slash have you seen this cat, which is segment three. So we want to get only the channel entry associated with that have you seen this cat. So let's build out our content here. We're going to use our channel entries loop, exp channel entries. And we're going to say channel equals blog 
and we're going to say URL title equals segment three. Expression Engine is smart enough to be able to grab all of these segments and to help uh, divvy them out in a really helpful way. So, and that will give us our image, our title, and just make sure I got everything in the loop. Perfect. And now I'm going to tab this over and then add our closing channel entries loop. There we go. Refresh, we're still seeing the same thing. Let's add our dynamic fields. So I'll add here, change this into title, take this placeholder image and change this into featured image. And then our blog content is our other fields. Let's wrap that in curly brackets. And we have a blog and it is live. So if I go all the way back home or let's actually go back to the blog listing. Now I can click on our very first blog and see our content there looking good. So now one of the things that you may have noticed is that all of our blogs and all of our templates are packed to the brim with the same code over and over and over again. In our next video, we're going to go using, uh, go through using layouts in order to make sure our templates stay nice and dry. So we don't repeat yourself. And, uh, so we can make use of some of EE's other underlying magic, like changing this blog title right now, all of our blog pages, just say page title. We're going to use layouts to change that. So with all of that, we'll see you in the next one.